Welcome to the lounge, all my fellow loungers, chillers, bowlers, and grillers. Today's episode, we're chilling and grilling. We're not really grilling, but we're still chilling. And we're going to be cooking. This is one of my all-time favorites. This is probably the meal that I've, I'm known for in my family and everything. I am making Uncle Larry's chicken pot pie. This is like really awesome. I mean, I, this is one of our favorite ones. So it's like, I hope you guys try this one. So we're going to get started. But hey, I got a safety man here. If you haven't checked out the video with him, you need to check that out. Also, I got my cool new sign here. Look at it. Check it out. No hate needed, just love. Isn't that awesome? Rebecca, thank you so much for that. And also, one kind of cool thing that I'm kind of proud of also is that, look what I got now. Let me show you that. Chilling at the Lounge. Uncle Larry on YouTube. We're going to be selling these at our Etsy site. We're going to have for bottles and cans. So, hey, if you can't meet me here at the Lounge, you can pretend you're here. Just saying. Anyway, let's get started. First for the crust. We are going to need flour. We're going to need some butter flavored shortening or just plain shortening. It's up to you. I like butter flavored. Some salt and some H2O. Or you might call it water. Or you might say water. That clear stuff. A mixing bowl, a tablespoon, and this fancy looking little thing here, which I believe is called a pastry cutter, correct me if I'm wrong, or you can use two knives and go like this, but I'd rather go like this. So that's up to you. Let's get started. What we have is two cups of flour. Throw that in your mixing bowl. Next, put in your salt, which is one teaspoon. Put that aside. Get yourself a fork and fork it. Just mix that up nice and good. You can't even see the salt anymore. Do you think it's mixed good? Have no idea. It disappeared. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, I probably need to mix a bit more. What? Okay. Next, you add in two thirds of a cup of shortening. Bloop. Next. Take your pastry cutter, right? Throw some but uh, butter, yeah. Throw some flour over that. Now you're gonna just start cutting this up. And it's gonna to stick to your pastry cutter. And every once in a while, you might just wanna take your fork and just, you know, take it out of there. Okay, but anyway, you're gonna keep continuing to do this until it's about the size of peas. You should know what a pea looks like. Right, Tom? Mm-hmm. As you can see, it's about the size of peas. So what I like to do, and, and I'm sure a lot of people are better than I am with, with, the, uh, with making this anyway. I'm not the greatest at making pastry crust, but you're about six or seven of these tablespoons. Sometimes you have to use more, sometimes you don't, it all depends. I go by look, so you put a tablespoon in at a time and you see when it gets like that, you just kind of throw that over to the side. Then you take another one. That's number two. And you throw that aside. You can always tell when it gets wet because it sticks. Okay, so here's number three. And you throw the wet stuff aside. And so it goes. Four. And of course it runs down it. Don't worry about that because you're going to put stuff on there to, and just push it aside like that. Stuff that doesn't have it, try to keep that over to one side. What number am I on, Tom? Five? I think so. What? What do you mean? I think so. Well, if I didn't think it was on five, then I would tell you. Well, I would have liked better, like you say, and like, yes, that's what you're on. No, I think so. Six, well, it doesn't really matter because I know what it looks like when it's supposed to be right, so. Number seven. Now, again, 
if it's really dry outside and everything, it's going to take more and dry in your house, it's going to take more. You're not mixing this really good. You know what I'm saying? Like you want it wet, but you don't want it over wet. So it's kind of hard to say. I need another one here. You're not, and like I said, you're not mixing this up. You're just, I go by the way it looks and it looks like it needs yet another one. It might be very dry in our house right now, which I'm sure it is. Is it dry in here, Tom? Probably. Probably. That's all you got for me? Yeah. Probably. All right, I'm gonna do one more. I don't even know what number we're up to right now. Do you? Like nine or 10. Yeah. You can see how it is. It's like clumpy now, right? That's about right. Okay. Now, my hands are nice and clean. Tom is my witness. He has seen me wash my hands several times. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and start balling this up. Now, we're making a top and a bottom crust, right? So, you want more for the bottom, naturally, than the top. So, what I'd like to do is go unevenly, naturally, because... Oh, you see how it fell apart there? You know why? Because it just wants to irritate me. Right, Tom? I guess. Tom has so much to say today. It's a little rough week for Tom. He's got finals this week. And so he's got some things on his mind. Right, Tom? Yep. And I don't really know how to comment on you making squeezing pie crust. Okay, I understand that. Anyway, this is what I like to do. Other people, everybody has their own methods for a lot of things. This is what I do, right? Now, they're almost even, right? When you say one's just slightly bigger than the other, right? I'm actually going to take a little bit more off of this guy here and give it to that guy because, like I said, the top is... I don't need as much for the top as I do for the bottom. Because the bottom's the good stuff anyway, isn't it, Tom? Yeah. That's the best part of it. Anyway, you want to put this aside? What I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a little flour on top, on top of this, just so that it's not going to stick in my bowl. And yeah, you now I know you guys are like, oh, he just stuck his hand in the flour. Yeah, that's so what? That's what we do. Putting that all over this. And then I'm going to put some handy wrap on top of this bowl, put it on the refrigerator, put it not on the refrigerator, but actually in the refrigerator because I want it to get cool. I find that it's easier to work with this stuff when it's cool. We are now going to go over the whole bunch of ingredients that we're going to need, which is a, a lot of ingredients. But do you notice my sign? That a friend sent me a fan mail? That's pretty awesome. So let's get started with the ingredients. We have celery, a couple carrots, three taters, an onion, a large onion, a can of sliced mushrooms. Now, hey, before I get any heat, I do have fresh mushrooms in the refrigerator, just to let you know. But this is so much easier for me, and I like these, so I'm using these. If you want fresh mushrooms, use fresh mushrooms. That's up to you. Flour, salt, we're gonna need some sage, black pepper, some chicken bouillon. Now you can use the squares, or I use the powder stuff because that's a little bit easier. We're gonna need some water, or water. We're gonna need some half and half, or you can use regular milk, you can use skim milk, you can use whatever you want to replace that. This makes it thicker. Um, the other stuff will just make it a little bit thinner, but that's still fine anyway. This, my secret ingredient, is Camels, cream of chicken, soup. Also, we're gonna use some fresh parsley. I like to use chicken breast tenders, the tenderloins, and uh, I use about a pound. This is roughly about a pound and a quarter. So, that's plenty. Gonna need some olive oil and I like to use Montreal chicken seasoning, which I'm sure you guys all know that. That's just 
the list of ingredients. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna start chopping word, like Tom's gonna help me. The celery, the carrots, potatoes. We wanna get them on because they take, you know, on the long side to, uh, to get tender. So that's what we're gonna start with. So I chopped up all the vegetables. This is about the size you want. Potatoes about like that size. Your celery, just little, little pieces like that. And your carrots, little pieces like that. What you wanna do then next is put a little salt on them. Little, little pepper. A little? Just a little. Fill it up with water, and then we're gonna put it on the stove and boil it. Now what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put all my dry ingredients together right now, mix them up, and set them aside until I need them. And what I'm gonna need is a third cup of flour. I'm gonna need a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna need a quarter teaspoon of sage. And I'm gonna need an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. Put that in there. Mix that up pretty good. And then you can just set it aside until you're gonna need it later. And in the meantime, we're gonna get ready for our wet ingredients that we're gonna to mix together. Now for the wet ingredients. What we need here is two cups of water. I have three quarters cup of half and half, or you can use milk like I told you before, that's up to you. A tablespoon of granular chicken bouillon, or if you use the other ones, you can, you can use them if you want. Uh, cubes you mean? Cubes, what did I say? You just said the other one. Oh, the other ones, yeah, whatever. We have a can of cream of chicken soup. We're gonna put that in there. And I know people will probably say, hey, that's not real cooking. Yes, it is. You know what? It is real cooking. Because you know what? Everybody doesn't make everything from scratch. So it's more realistic. This, this is how... And besides that, I think if you try this, you will be absolutely blown away. Now, this we have about a quarter of a, of a cup of parsley and chop it really fine fresh parsley. I put that in there. I'm going to mix that up really good. You know, try to get that um, that bouillon to actually dissolve in there. Mix that up good and then you can put that actually in the refrigerator and just let it sit there until you're ready to use it. We're going to start sauteing the onions and the mushrooms right now. So you want a quarter cup of... Oh, also Tom just pointed to it. You guys couldn't see him because he's behind the camera. But the vegetables are done. And how you tell that is you just take a fork, they have one right here, and you just make sure that they're, they're tender, right? They, that the fork goes in it pretty, pretty easy. And check out your carrots and your celery. Once they get tender, drain them. Put a lid on it and just set them aside. In the meantime, what we're gonna do is we want a quarter cup of butter in our, our skillet like this. Okay, turn it on, get that butter started to melt. I also chopped up my onions. And this is how I chop them up, about like that size right there. Okay, and we're gonna throw them in there with the butter. Now, we're gonna keep the chicken separated because we don't want the chicken near the, near the stuff. So anyway, that's gonna go like that. These, because these are already pre-cooked mushrooms, these actually don't go until they get almost translucent. And I know that in the comment section before somebody asked me um, what is translucent, that is almost clear, okay? So that's how you know when they're done. Plus they're very tender and everything. So that's what we're gonna wait for here. In the meantime, you can actually start your chicken if you want to, that'll be the next step. So for the chicken, you're gonna just take some olive oil, pour that in your pan, not that much, I mean, there's no exact science to it. This is just so that we can get that pan all coated with that. Right? Take your chickie on and we're gonna put that all in there. Yeah, just love touching raw chicken. Not at all. Kind of spread it out. You don't want it all, get that oil all over it. You know, you don't want it all on one side. You want it kind of spread out. You don't want it all piled up in one, one thing. So. I'm doing this one-handed right now, so 
I'm gonna take my Montreal chicken seasoning right now and I'm gonna sprinkle, damn it, it hasn't been opened up. Do I have another one here? Yes, I do. I have an open one, sweet. What are you smiling for, Tom? That is funny. Anyway, coat it good. And then once we turn this over, we're going to coat it again. And in the meantime, stir your, make sure you keep stirring these things to get them, you don't want them all sitting in one spot. In the meantime, now I'm gonna go wash my hands. So our chicken looks about done. Now I wanna just emphasize that, make sure that, you know, like if you have any doubts about whether the chicken is done or not, you know, go to one of the bigger pieces and maybe cut it in half to make sure that it's not pink on the inside. Once it's like that, you can just turn off your heat now, take them, and we're gonna just put them aside. And what I do is I, I take paper plates and I just put um, some paper towels on top of them. And then I put them on top of that. And that way, if there's any of that oil, I just kind of drain that out of it. And they can just sit by, sit by, sit on the side Why? we are in the while, oh my lord, <laughs> while we are in the midst of cooking our other stuff. Cause don't worry, everything's gonna get hot again. Cause you know what? We're putting it all in the oven. Now, in the meantime, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to get the bottom crust ready because it's a good time to do that since we're still waiting on the onions. And put some flour over that and make sure you flour. I have wax paper down right now. Get yourself a rolling pin. And let me tell you, I am not that good at this, so bear with me. I am not a pastry chef. I am just a regular guy who likes to cook. Right, Tom? Yep. Okay, and what I do is I put a little bit of that on it, and then I'm gonna to try to flip that over, so I just don't want it to stick. Anyway, so you put a little flour on that, and now we're going to get irritated by the wax paper moving all over the place, because there you go. Tom's helping me out right now. You guys don't really see that, but it is a big help. Anyway, we're gonna roll this out nice and thin because we want it to actually be big enough to go into our casserole dish all on the bottom. And believe it or not, the bottom crust is the absolutely best part of this whole thing, if I say so myself. What do you think, Tom? Pretty much. Well, I shouldn't say the best part of the whole thing. The whole thing is good, but it's like, when you get some of that, that you know that that crust in there with the flavors of everything else wow it's just awesome anyway so that's that's about what i'm going to do and now you're going to see me butcher this when i try to put it in this dish right now don't laugh so much tom i'll try not to no like i could do better anyway right i fold it in half and then i'm going to put it like this oh cooperate please cooperate all right that's not too bad i've done worse you see how it does that? It just likes to irritate you. We're gonna call this crust Melissa. It just likes to irritate you. All right, ah, son of a mother. You push one inch down. Blah, blah, blah. Try to, if what you can do is try to pinch it over the side like that, just to hold it up there. Now, don't worry about being perfect. It's not gonna be perfect on the bottom. And you know what? Who really cares? Because you know why? Nobody sees what's inside here. It's all hidden secrets. You can just put that aside now. Just don't look at that side. This side looks pretty good. That side, not so good. This side, good. The onions are nice and tender now. And what I did is I took one out and I actually ate it. That's how I tell. And now I'm gonna put my canned mushrooms in here and then just mix them up. And to tell you the truth, you're not really cooking these right now. We're just heating these up. So we're just gonna let these go because they're, they're on the cold side right now because I just put them in there. So we're gonna let these go for just a little bit, maybe a minute or two, and then we're gonna start making our roux. So everything now is nice and hot again. So what I'm gonna do is take my dry ingredients and you put them in with all this and make sure you mix it up nice and good. You don't wanna really cook the flour, but you want to mix it up. So, 
keep mixing, just keep mixing. Remember, remember the song that Tom did and got copyrighted for it probably. And all Except that we didn't. No, I know we didn't. Well, that, that one we didn't, but. Yeah. Yeah, other problems that we've had, right? Mm -hmm. Then take your wet ingredients and just pour them in there like so. Now, this is important. Keep whisking it so you can incorporate that flour into this. And you're gonna keep cooking this until, what's gonna happen, Tom? What's I gonna, don't know what is gonna happen, Dad. You don't? It's gonna get thick and bubbly. Or for the seasons to tease, sings the Christmas song, Buble. Right, it's gonna get thick and buble. What does he sing, Tom? No idea. Yeah, I'm not really into that kind of music, but... Anyway, this is what you do. You're just gonna constantly... Well, not constantly, you can take a break every now and then and, you know, grab yourself something to drink. And then go back to it. Because this is the fun part. But anyway, why this is getting thick and bubbly, once that gets like that, then we're gonna add everything else together into this. Then we're gonna pour in that. But in the meantime, why this is getting thick and bubbly, I'm actually gonna get the top crust ready for this. So I can just have it sitting out and ready to be put on top. So I rolled out the top crust right now and I'm just gonna let this sit aside. Um, I think it's big enough for that. And any pieces that are gonna be like odd, I'm gonna fill in over here too on that on that thing. So um, in the meantime, we're going to, you know, this is, we're going to keep stirring this stuff, right? Of course, got to keep stirring it because that's what you got to do. And this is probably a good time to actually preheat your oven to 250. As you can see, it's thick and bubbly now. Thick and bubble. So now we're going to take our vegetables and we're going to dump them in. Be careful dumping these in. By the way, in case I didn't say, I cook almost everything on medium flame. So, you know, it, all stoves are different. So you got to go by your stove, really. Anyway, put this, the, your, all your vegetables in here. Be very careful. And when you're mixing this up, you can't really, you know, with a whisk, especially. You can't really, like, you know, whisk it really good. So just kind of like spread it in. And then the next step is going to be, is to not drop your chicken on the floor, but actually put your chicken in there. Mix all that up in there. And what you're gonna do now, I mean, look at, see how I got it right to the edge of the top? This is some good stuff, I'm telling you. You're gonna mix this up and you're gonna, after you get it completely mixed up, you're gonna wait until it actually starts bubbling again. And once it does that, then it's done and we can pour it into our casserole dish. It started bubbling again, right? So now we can put it into our casserole dish. This has a little weight to it right now, so just be very, very careful. You're on the wrong side of me, Tom. You need to be over here. Whoops. Get all that good stuff in there. Isn't it amazing how it's like just perfect amount for the uh, casserole dish? It's almost like I planned it out, isn't it? Yep. Okay, so now we're gonna put that like that. We're gonna put the top on. And you gotta be really careful with this cause you don't want it to fall apart. So we're gonna take that like that and, oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Then break this off around the outside edge. And this is what I'm telling you guys. It's like, okay, now I have extra crust. What do I do with it? Do you throw it away? No, you don't throw it away. Shove it down inside there. Remember that one spot that didn't have that much crust? I think it was over this side. Well, yeah, that was it. Stick it down inside there, cause the stuff that's inside the liquid, Tom will agree, that's the best stuff. So, pinch that all around here, and next thing you wanna do is get a knife. 
because we have to stab it a little bit. Oops, a little bit over there, okay. What you want to do, take a knife and just kind of put some X's in it. Probably six to eight, something like that. It's just so that the steam can come out of it. Now you can put it in the oven. I have, this is already preheated and is it still preheating? It's actually still preheating. Oh, it's like magic. Anyway, I have my rack set on the middle of the oven. So now we're gonna put this in. And let that cook for about 10 to 12 minutes. I don't know why I just did that. Put your timer on and actually put it on. I'm gonna put it on 10 and I'm gonna check it in 10 and then it'll probably have to go 12, but it's probably a good idea to just put it on 10 and then check it out. You just want it to be like, just like a little golden brown around the edges and everything, and it's good. As you can see, you see how it's got a little golden brown up on there and around the edges? That's done. So now just take it and be very careful because this be hot. And there we go. Okay, so now we can taste it. Watch it because it's really hot. Hmm. I absolutely love this stuff and to mm -hmm. tell you and tell you the truth it is actually even better the next day if you can believe it or not don't you think so debatable I like most things fresh anyway okay well anyway I know it takes a long time to make this meal but I really think it's worthwhile I know this is one of Tom's favorite meals if not the favorite meal that I make for him yep. right so Check it out, guys, and try it out, you know. Until next time, grab yourself something cold to drink, put your feet up and relax, and we'll Product meet you at placement. the And we'll meet you at the lounge. Soda. <sighs>